Now let's review the Metal Robot Soul Prototype W Zeta Gundam. This figure shockingly reproduces the transformation and combination that were not possible with the Double Zeta released in the past with almost no replacement. When you see this transformation mechanism made possible by the latest technology, even adults are sure to return to being kids. Please enjoy it until the end. So what we'll be introducing this time is the Metal Robot Soul Signature Prototype W Zeta Gundam. The reviewer is Mr. E in charge of modifications. First of all, everyone, do you know this aircraft? Mr. E didn't know much. Well, from the name, you can guess it's the predecessor to the Double Zeta Gundam, but I had no idea which work it appeared in, so I gathered information online. Based on my research, it appeared in three works. The 1990 novel Universe's Treasure Trove, serialized in a magazine called SD Club, the 1991 comic Move Out, Double Zeta Gundam published in Gundam Magazine, and the 1997 comic Mobile Suit, Gundam Double Zeta Gaiden Devil's Battlefield published in Comic Bon Bon. This time it seems like the inspiration comes from the comic that ran in Gundam Magazine. Let's take a look at the package art first. The clean white base package has the prototype Double Zeta standing in the center. In the background is the G-Top G-Base Core Fighter. It looks awesome, but why is the logo metallic red? It looks cool, but why red? The product itself is supervised by Hajime Kadogi, although it has a management signature and a name that expresses the passion of the development process. The design of Omoto is Kuniyoshi Okawara, and as the name suggests, it is an aircraft that corresponds to the test machine of the Double Zeta Gundam, but the original setting and core. It doesn't have a fighter, but it seems that there is also a B-type with a core fighter, and the settings there are reflected. The main attraction is the main body transformation and coalescing gimmick, which separates the main body into two combat aircraft, the G-Top Zero Type and the G-Base Type Zero. And when you combine them, you get a pilgrimage form called the G-Fortress. And let's take a look at what's inside. There are two blisters in total, one of which contains the main body and the other containing the display stand and joint parts. The rest comes with a monochrome manual, which is surprisingly a blister with a large number of pages. But first of all, the blister that contains the main body. The double zeta body is based on a dull white rather than prototype like grey with a well-balanced color scheme of blue and orange. The dark grey of each part also tightens the overall impression which is cool. The antenna on the main unit is designed for transformation but the fixed antenna can also be replaced. This is a beam gun that attaches to a backpack and this is a double beam rifle. The folded shield is eye-catching with the federal cross mark and the double zeta marking. There is almost no red in the body, so it's a very good accent, yes. And it's a signature backpack of the double zeta. The sense of volume is irresistible and there are six types of wrist parts that can be turned on the main body and a total of eight types are included. That's enough for an action figure and a blister with a pedestal. The pedestal is insanely simple with only a black letter logo on a white base and it has a very respectful signature design. Behind the pedestal, a stand was included to display the G-Top, G-Base and Core Fighter separately. The prototype Double Zeta doesn't have a beam saber, so it doesn't have a beam effect. Alright, let's quickly assemble the main body, shall we? Start by sticking the beam gun into the backpack and inserting these two axes into the Double Zeta body. Here you can open the top axis, tuck it away and simply connect using only the waist like this. I think this is a measure to facilitate the transformation process. If you're worried about its holding power, please remove the top axis and connect it. You can spin around the beam rifle like this and pull out the grip, the shield's joint fits in between the wings of this arm. Yes, I have fully equipped the prototype Double Zeta Gundam. Thanks to the shoulder and waist wings and the large backpack, it now has the voluminous silhouette that is representative of the double zeta. The size is roughly 1 144th scale. Each part, because of the use of die-cast parts, feels quite heavy when held. The die-cast parts of the knees and elbows are plated, giving it a heavier and metallic feel. It also functions as an accent. The matte paint provides a very calming feeling. 
Personally, I believe that the prototype looks better in a matte form. Well, since this isn't a production machine, there is an image of not making too bold a statement. The matte calm impression is a fantastic match. However, the use of metallic colours for some parts of the frame serves as a great accent, and painting the inside of the vernier with matte is quite cool. What's amazing is the attention to detail in painting. There's a lot of duct paintings like this, and the precision is very high. It's quite hard to do this with gunplay, and that's why it's impressive. This orange and blue paint job is very good. Such fine vernier paintings are also very beautiful. With so many fine details, the volume of information increases significantly, making it look spectacular. The markings are printed on a single sheet without any margins, resulting in a very clean finish. The red caution mark is a very nice accent. The wing slit on the arm is a print, not carved. I thought it was a photo because the details were hidden until I saw the actual. Some of the grey parts are moulded in colour. You won't notice it unless you look closely because it's half camouflaged with the painted parts. Compared with the photo of the production Double Zeta, it seems similar at first glance, but the actual design is significantly different. But I can feel the connection to the Double Zeta. As a test model, it has a similar atmosphere and it's well reflected in the design. Let's pick a few points and take a closer look, starting with the head. Instead of the Double Zeta's high mega cannon, there is a large sensor on the forehead. Also, there is no Vulcan on the side. The shape of the slit is different, and the facial features feel like they're squeezed toward the center. The chest has a notable federal mark in the center, but the overall shape is quite different. The silhouette has become more rounded. The number of verniers is significantly larger compared to the double zeta, and the accordion-like details on the sides are quite distinctive. The wings on the waist are quite long and the wings on the arms are similar, but this part is quite thin, so be careful not to break it. The biggest difference in shape is the legs, the structure is far more complex compared to the double zeta. I personally like the model of this one, it has a stronger robot feel. The part with the double zeta's beam saber has been replaced with a beam gun. There's no missile pot, but you can remove the part that lies on the missile pot. Please look forward to the development of this product. Let's take a look at the range of mobility. The arms are double jointed and can bend to a certain degree. The shoulder joints are a bit tight, but they can be raised to an extent. The waist is slightly twisted with the core fighter, but hardly moves. The side skirt hinders, thus it hardly rises. If it's in the forward direction, it can be raised quite a bit. The knee is also double jointed, but the armour interferes, it can only bend to a certain extent. Well, the transformation mechanism is the main attraction, so the moving parts are quite modest. The upper body detaches easily, so I accidentally dropped it. I was scared it would fall down the corner. Okay, so let's look at the highlight this time. The transformation and merging mechanism. The robot soul Double Zeta Gundam that was sold in 2020 did not transform, but this prototype Double Zeta can transform mostly by moving parts, although some parts can be replaced. It seems slightly simpler than the Double Zeta's transformation mechanism, but it's still impressive that it can transform at this size. First of all, the upper body is transformed into a core top zero shape. The weapons are removed and the backpack shaft is removed from the back. The upper body is separated by the core block. The antenna on the head is removed once and the wrist is replaced with one that can transform. Then you open the front and back covers of the arms, rotate the wrists, close the covers again and the vernier is exposed like this. Next, you pull the chest armor out in front of you and go through your head to open it upwards. It's kind of a Zeta-like mechanism. And then you deploy this little nose and push the armor in and lock it. Once the antenna on the head is deformed and returned to its original position, it's okay to use a fixed type antenna that does not deform. Then pull out the shoulder armor and rotate it 90 degrees to fold it under the body. Finally, Turn the arm wing 90 degrees and unfold the wing at a right angle like this and the transformation is complete. Yes, this makes it a complete core top. The nose and arm wings that extend from the chest 
create a fighter-like silhouette and part of the shoulder armor extends downward like landing gear, which is interesting because the transformation isn't that difficult and there isn't any part that is particularly confusing. In addition as an original gimmick, you can equip the body underneath with a shield and a beam rifle. It makes it look really cool and aggressive, but the stand's mounting holes get filled in so you can't display it in flight conditions. That's the only downside. And now the original gimmick of the core fighter's transformation. First, remove the core block from the back of the core top. Then rotate the top wing and the nose to pull out this small wing by its side, then pull it out. Also pull out the left and right veneer blocks. Yes, the core fighter is complete. Wow, the coloring on this core fighter is nice. The rim of the canopy is also painted well, making for a very precise design. Finally, transform the backpack and the lower body parts into the core base first. Remove the front skirt and attach the skirt to the supplied joint part. Insert this from underneath the rear skirt. Next, raise the claws on the backpack side and move the entire backpack down. Hook the locking claw into the footholes, close the toes. Then, turn the hip wing 90 degrees to open it horizontally. Finally, raise the nose. Yes, the G base is complete. I was able to transform it without changing anything but the front skirt. The block-like square form is characteristic, isn't it? I was able to transform it without any problems because the mechanism here is not that complex. It's very easy to play with. Furthermore, it can also combine with the core fighter as an original gimmick. Close the wing and burner block of the core fighter. Close the nose of the core base and dock the core fighter. Yes, it became like this has a silhouette like a cool core booster. Yes, this one is cool. Yes, the split transformation has been completed for now. The replacement parts are only the antenna, the neck, and the front skirt. It's really almost a complete transformation. Wow, this is amazing. By the way, you can display flying three machines using the pillar of the attached stand. Oh, this view tickles the man's heart. Now, the core top and core base can also be combined even further. First, pull out the joint on the shoulder of the core top and rotate the arm 90 degrees. Like this, the wing opens. Move the shoulder armor to the body side and rotates 180 degrees. The core fighter is once removed and returned to the core block state, then attached to the core base. Raise the core base's backpack, return the front skirt to its original position and rotate both feet 180 degrees. Fold the wing of the waist. Then open another claw of the backpack and open this yellow part of the claw. Wow, this is amazing! And if you plug the claw of the backpack here. Now once you merge with the core top and attach the weapon, yes, we have a complete G-Fortress in its cruise form. This thing has an incredible volume. It's fascinating. It's like a little battleship and it's super cool. The silhouette is well arranged and not just transformable. The overall design is properly balanced. This must have been quite challenging to design. Please be careful not to drop the core top as it's very easy to remove. It's quite heavy so I'd recommend using multiple struts when displaying it in this state. Let's look at the last piece, the armaments. There are only three types of armaments. The beam gun on the back is very expressive since it's flexible and movable. Next, the shield. It appears the color was not originally decided, and it seems it was turned into a red shield that reminds of the first Gundam when it was commercialized. Finally, the double beam rifle. It has a slender design compared to the double Zeta, but the power pipes and detail are precise and extremely cool. So, what do you think about the Metal Robot Soul KA signature prototype double Zeta Gundam? The transformation gimmick, which is virtually replacement free, is absolutely fantastic and quite impressive. Since it's a finished figure, I can have fun with it to the extent of wanting to play with the transformation and merging every day. In the developer interview, they mentioned wanting you to look forward to future products so a fully transformable double Zeta may not be a dream. See you in the next video. Thank you for watching.